you know, what we are really focused on at Facebook is helping people connect, right? That's what I, what I wake up in the morning and go to bed at night thinking about. And a lot of the experiences that I've wanted to be able to build around helping people connect with each other, um, even from before I started Facebook, you, you really need a technology that helps you feel like you're right there with another person in order to deliver those. So what virtual and augmented reality are all about is delivering this sense of presence, right? The feeling like you're really there in another place um, and with another person, which is different from any other technology that we've had. When we're looking at our screens, um, and whether it's a phone or a or a computer, or we're doing this this video chat, you know, it's 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 a uh, you know enough to give us a, a mild sense of presence, like we're there with each other. But we're basically you know the whole time we know that we're in a different place, and 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 we're just trying to you know kind of trick our mind into thinking that we're together. Whereas with virtual and augmented reality, um, you know, it, it really delivers the sense of presence. I mean, that's why you mentioned vertigo before. That's because you, your, your mind, you, you really felt like you were in a different place um, and were afraid of, of falling off of whatever you were standing on, which, you know, isn't the main sensation we're trying to deliver in virtual reality, but, but it gives a sense of the, the type of presence that, um, that is possible and how, and how emotionally resonant that is. Um, so there are a few different directions for this technology that, that we're excited about. Um, one is virtual reality, which is what Quest 2 is. Um, and that is basically a completely immersive experience where you know, you're, you're in it and, yeah, um, and, and you feel like you're in a completely different place, a completely virtual environment. Um, and then there's augmented reality, which is eventually going to take the form of you know, a normal looking pair of glasses, which can um, you know, put holograms in the world um, and blend the digital 3D world um, and give you a sense of presence there while, while, while kind of still being in the physical world around you. So, you know, the, the holy grail there, you know, is five years from now when we're at, you know, a future version of VivaTech together, um, you know, if, if I can't make it to Paris, um, you'll have, you know, hologram Mark um, sitting on the couch next to you, um, or I'll have hologram Maurice sitting on my couch here uh, in California. And, um, and, and when I want to show you what the next version of, of, of Quest or or, um, or the, the augmented reality glasses are that we're working on, I'll just be able to you know, snap my fingers and here's a hologram version of it, and I can hand it to you and you can you can you can touch it and you can put it on and, and feel it. Um, you know, if we want to play a game, you know, we'll be able to just snap my fingers here. Here's the game. Um, so it's going to be incredibly powerful. It already it already is in a lot of ways. Um, VR with Quest Two is has reached an inflection point where it's now. Um, you know, starting to take off a bit faster than even we we expected, um, and a, a lot of the use today is games, right? Really immersive environments, media, games. Um, but part of what is exciting to me is that we're also starting to see it branch out beyond that. Um, a lot of the experiences are social experiences, people hanging out with each other, which at the end of the day is why why Facebook is in this and why we're helping to build this. Um, but we're also seeing things like um, fitness apps, you know, whether that's um, Supernatural or FitXR or um, you know any of these things where you think about it like Peloton um, where you have a subscription but um, but instead the device is VR and you put on your headset and you're in this amazing environment and you're doing a boxing class with an instructor or a dance class and it's you know great cardio but you're doing it with your headset so it's quickly expanding beyond games um, into a bunch of other use cases and we think that this is eventually going to be. Um, the, a big part of the next major computing platform after um, you know after phones and, and after PCs. It's not like computers are going away or phones are going away, but I think that this has the potential to be something at that scale of importance in the world. And when it is, I, I just think these social experiences that we're going to be able to deliver through that by having a real sense of presence with another person are, are just going to be amazing. I mean, this is what I've been you know, hoping that would exist for like 15 years now. So getting to play a, a role in helping to build this um, is certainly one of the most exciting things that I think we get to work on now. We've just hit sort of the minimum threshold form factor um, that, that that's going to be kind of a mass market device. I mean, this is, um, you know, I think we, we've learned that it needs to do a, a few things. One is, in order for this to be widely adopted, it needs to be wireless, right? The early version of, of, of Rift, probably, that you tried um, had a wire. And so you could, you could look around and you can see a world and it could, be, it could feel immersive. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to walk around through a space, 
um, or if you're trying to do fitness, you don't want to have a wire that like gets wrapped around you, right? I mean, so it, it really breaks the feeling of the sense of presence. But doing all of this wirelessly, um, you know, delivering the technology to, you know, we need to, and, and I think it's 10 milliseconds um, when you turn your head, render a complete image of the world um, before your eye can kind of refresh its vision or else, um, you know, it feels very unnatural. So the, the computational problems here um, are, are just ones that, you know, there aren't many companies in the world that, that can deliver that kind of technology to build that. But the wireless piece is very important. Over time, it's going to have to get lighter and smaller too. Um, for virtual reality, um, there are a few there are fewer constraints there because you're, you tend to be doing it, you know, in your home or in an office, and you're not you're not kind of like sitting there in a meeting with another person. But for augmented reality, that's where it gets really tough because we're basically going to have to deliver all this technology in what will end up being a normal looking pair of of glasses, right? So if you think about the the technology problem here, we're basically trying to fit. Um, like a supercomputer into a pair of glasses that, that can do things like put holograms into the world and do all this 3D rendering that hasn't really ever been done before in this tiny form factor. And we, we have to deal with problems like not only getting enough compute power to be able to make that work, but having it not get so hot that it becomes uncomfortable on your face and having it so that in a pair of glasses, we can fit a battery that will last all day. So these are really interesting technology challenges. I actually think that these are some of the most um, challenging and, and important technology challenges of the next decade to be able to unlock. And so both from a social and experience perspective and you know, how um, you know, interesting of a challenge this is to work on, it's, it's something that I think is, is really exciting. And you know, let me say well, one more thing on this is, you know, while, while AR glasses of the type that I'm talking about don't exist yet, um, you know, all the technology challenges haven't, haven't been worked out yet. I, I think we're still you know, a few years away from this. Um, one of the things that I am excited about is we're partnering with Essilor Luxottica to ship a pair of smart Ray-Ban glasses this year. So they're, they're not going to be augmented reality glasses, um, but they're going to be smart glasses that basically look and, and feel like Ray-Bans, but can add a lot more technology and, um, and, and interesting use cases to that, um, that, that, we'll, that we'll get into at some point over the, over the next couple of months. Um, but, but I'm really excited for that collaboration. Um, and I think that that's going to be a great product too. And that's, that's kind of on the path to, to the future that we're building here. And yeah. let, let me just say one more thing about the meetings, because, you know, having, um, having meetings in virtual reality, um, is pretty amazing. Um, you, you know, one of the big pieces that we work on, it's not just the, the hardware platforms, it's the, the software platform around it. You know, it's, it's kind of helping to contribute to this vision that a lot of companies are calling the metaverse, right? The idea that, um, that, you know, there, there are different universes or worlds that we'll all be able to teleport into um, and we'll be able to do all these different things. And one of them is going to be work, right? One of the things that we're going to want to do is work and you're going to want to have a virtual office where you can come into and have staff meetings and all that. Um, and compared to video conferences, I actually think that even with the state of virtual reality today, um, there are a lot of reasons why it actually feels better to have meetings in virtual reality. For one, you know, people are very spatially oriented. You know, I kind of think about, um, you know, we make memories based on, okay, I heard, you know, you were on my right in this meeting and, and I heard you talking from my right and, I, and I, I looked over there and I saw the context of what was in the background. And, you know, we kind of lose that all when we're on video chat. You know, we're, we're just, there's a grid of faces and, you know, everything kind of feels the same. And, you know, I find myself having a hard time remembering what happened in certain meetings because there's not really a sense of place. Um, it, which is what you get in virtual reality. You, you feel like you're in a place with people. So that's already very powerful today. And I think some of the new kind of metaverse software that, um, that, that we and others are going to be you know, helping to contribute to this overall vision will make it so that a lot of meetings and other use cases um, will be able to happen in, in VR um, quite well, I think, in the, in the near term. Well, I think that there are a few different kinds of things that are going to get built. So one is you know, the analogy of apps like we have on our mobile phones, right? which is a developer will create a whole experience and you'll go into that experience. But I think another big part of this that's part of this metaverse vision is that we're also going to have a lot of digital goods. Um, you know, whether it's clothing for, for yourself that will be digital or, you know, it's, um, you know, when I was talking before about how if I wanted to show you a future model of Quest, I can have a hologram for that. That's a digital good. Um, or a future version of the Ray-Ban glasses, that's a digital good. I actually think 
you know, if you do this thought experiment, or walk around for a day and think about how many of the things that are in your life don't actually need to be physical and could be easily replaced by a digital hologram in a world where you had um, where you had glasses. Um, you know, basically any media, right? Any art, um, you know, it, like any screen, right? Any TV in the future won't need to actually exist physically. You, know, you could just it could just be an app that that your glasses kind of project onto a wall. Um, and, and that can be shared among you know everyone who's who's your friends who's watching that. So that's going to unlock this whole creative economy. Where now you know instead of you know producing a TV or producing you know some some kind of complex um, physical thing you know requires factories or a lot of materials. You know any any kid or or developer or creator around the world is going to be able to do this with a, a set of 3D development tools um, and code, and that they'll be able to sell their their products without having to worry about logistics or shipping it around. Um, so it all contributes to this uh, bigger hope that, that, that I think we share with a lot of other companies to help bring about this creative economy. And, you know, I think, uh, a, a, you know, my view on this is that any real positive vision for the future should involve a lot more people being able to do creative work that they enjoy than um, rather than than just having to you know do jobs that that maybe they have to do to make a living or, or that they that they don't find as rewarding and in order to do that um, you, you don't just it, you need to go beyond just delivering this awesome consumer experience you also need to build tools that can help all of these individual creators and businesses make money so that they eventually millions and millions or tens of millions of people can make a living doing this and and that's how we make this something that um, that doesn't just create an awesome user experience and, and create awesome social experiences, but creates a, a an economic tide that helps create opportunity for people around the world. And I think that that is equally exciting um, and, and something that I think we're going to see get unlocked over the next five to ten years. So our our vision and, and mission at Facebook is to serve everyone in the world, right? So so we're not a company that tries to build kind of luxury or pr or, or pr products. That we sell at a huge premium for a smaller set of people. You know, we want to build something that's accessible to ev to everyone. So, you know, I mean, we're not looking at this in terms of thinking, okay, we're going to build this amazing technology. How much can we sell it for? We're looking at this and saying, okay, how how cheap can we make this so that way as many people as possible can get access to? And that will mean basically we're going to be selling the devices either you know at the cost that it make that it takes us to make them. Um, or maybe we'll even subsidize them a bit um, in order to help get them in more people's hands. Um, so that way, as many people as possible can experience this. And I think that's going to be a different approach than what other companies take. Um, for apps, I think that they're going to be a, a wide range of, of, um, of different content. Um, you know, some of it is going to be free. Um, some of it is going to be paid where you pay up front. Some of it will be a subscription. Um, a lot of these things, I think, will, will, will allow for commerce around digital goods. Um, within the apps. So if you think about you know, some of these metaverse experiences that I'm talking about, I mean, a lot of this, you know, we're, we're, you know we, we and other developers are probably going to want to make getting into those worlds free, but then make it so that people can can buy different goods within them. And a lot of the goods, it's not just going to be, you know, us, it's not going to be us selling them as, 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 um, as just kind of one seller. We want to enable a whole marketplace of that. So you can buy things from other developers um, as well. So it's going to be all of these different models. But ultimately, I think in order to support the creative economy um, and, and to, to, to support the, the type of um, you know, development and talent that is going to exist in virtual and augmented reality, um, there are going to need to be a lot of different business models. Not everyone does just one thing. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I didn't mention advertising, but of course, that's, that's an incredibly important part of this and, and an area where we have you know, a lot of strength that we can bring to helping creators and developers monetize um, as well. But you know, right now, if you compare the size of virtual and augmented reality to mobile phones um, or even game consoles, it's a lot smaller. Which means that if you're a developer and you're choosing today, you know where where should I go develop to make the most money? Um, we really need to make the monetization work in order to to earn the time and, and attention and focus of the best developers to build content for these new platforms. And you know, I think that's that's working really well now. I think that there's um, you know something like um, fifty or sixty different um, developers or titles that um, that that have made more than a million dollars, right? So that you're de you're definitely starting to see that take off and and, and do well for um, for a lot of different types of developers. Um, and it, but over time, it's going to be the sum of a lot of different ways that they can make money that is going to 
um, enable the kind of economy that we need to, to have take place here.